Hey guys, my name is John Lake and today we're going to look inside my pond which is just here. Uh, so I've got all sorts of cool wildlife in it and really kind of abstract animals that you might have in your pond at home as well, so stay tuned. So one of the interesting things about frogs is their skin is quite incredible. So basically, they um, their, their skin can change colour and tone depending on their environment. So as you can see, it's on kind of like brown kind of background with a bit of green. And you can see its skin is actually brown with a tint of green. Um, so that is actually its skin changing colour to the environment that it's around. Also, you can see the little ridge on its back, so their joints, so those joints are what gives it the spring-loaded effect. Right, so this is super interesting. So we've got an elastic band here. So a frog's legs is kind of like these. So if you think how an elastic band works when you try and flick it and you try and fire it at somebody. So the tension comes from pulling it back and you let it go. And then the release of pressure uh, that's what makes the elastic band go forwards. Now, if we try and throw it at that speed, we try and use all the energy thrown forwards to try and get the same speed, we won't be able to get anywhere near the same speed that we can by pulling it back. Also, we're using less energy by pulling it back, so it's more proficient in the way that it, uh, it uses energy. And that's why frogs, when they pull back, so you see the, the ridge on their back just goes up like this, like kind of like my knuckles here like it goes up like a triangle and that's basically them pulling their legs back like an elastic band and then when they're freaked out and they have it ready spring loaded and all of a sudden as soon as it's like a threat comes along the elastic band's gone so that's kind of how their back legs work and also you can see how long they are and they're completely just fold out completely and that's what gives them that big jump and why they're known so so well for their for their jumping power there is another guy here he's come to say hello he seems to be quite intrigued by the light yeah so the kind of different things they eat they eat slugs and uh, they're, they're actually cannibals as well they eat their own young so they eat the tadpoles as well around them the algae and um, blanket weed that kind of thing um, they eat insects, they eat all sorts of different kind of things. So they are quite interesting animals in what they eat as well. So here I've just circled uh, this little creature and you probably think, what on earth is that? So this is actually called a pond shrimp and these are actually farmed uh, for... Um, for fish food so fish absolutely love these things we don't actually have any fish in our pond um because we wanted to try and keep it as wild as possible and so these are kind of in abundance at the moment but fish absolutely love eating these things and they're actually really common but you don't see them much because they're either trying to hide from fish or they've been eaten by fish the other thing is pond worms so these things are really weird so you can see this one trying to wriggle into the ground uh, these are actually called bloodworms, and they're not actually bloodworms. They're not actually worms at all. They're actually larvae, and they are midge larvae. So when they grow, they actually turn into midges, which is kind of fascinating because they actually get smaller as they get into adulthood. And then the final one is pond snails. So you get small pond snails and giant pond snails. Uh, this one you can see is a giant pond snail, and these aren't great for like you know trying to. If you're trying to grow kind of plants in your in your garden, but frogs absolutely love these things, and if you've got these in your pond, you will have an abundance of frogs. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so as you can see with the tadpoles that we've just got an absolute mass mass of them. So, yeah, so they kind of a pro and con to your pond, um, but they will attract frogs, um, which kind of like bring life to your pond. So. So if you are thinking of having a pond in your garden, here are a few tips for you to get started. Number one, 
what kind of pond are you after? So there are two kind of ponds. You can have a fish pond or a wow pond. Fish ponds are kind of like you need to keep on top of it. Uh, you need to protect it from herons, that kind of thing, because herons will come and just steal your fish. If you want a wildlife pond, you've got to try and keep it as natural as possible. Um, but obviously you get like things like blanket weed you need to take out. Tip number two, don't go for cheap lining. Cheap lining is really tempting because it is a lot cheaper. However, if your lining rips at any point, your whole pond's going to drain and that isn't what you want at all. A draining pond, a leaking pond is very difficult to fix. And in fact, you have to take the whole lining out to, in order to fix it. So when you first start, make sure you go for better, more expensive lining and it will cause you much, much less like problems in the future. Tip number three, get a filter and a water feature. So these help your pond stay clean. Two reasons why you want a clean pond. First is you get to see what's inside it. You can see the wildlife, you can enjoy what creatures are actually enjoying your pond. And second, if you have a dirty pond, it will start to smell and nobody wants a smelly pond in their garden. Tip number four, keep on top of it. If you're part in the summer, your pond might uh, have a little bit less water in it, so make sure you keep it topped up. Uh, otherwise, animals can tend to kind of leave and they don't want to come back because obviously the water's going. Uh, the other thing, you, obviously, if there's lots of gunk at the bottom, you want to—it's horrible. But every now and then, you kind of have to get a bucket and scoop all the muck out of the bottom. Uh, it's an, a horrible job and it's gross, but. It makes your pond look amazing. Uh, yeah, and also one way of avoiding that is getting a filter and getting a water feature because that means that the um, all the muck is going through the filter and it means it's cleaning it out. And make sure you change your filter every now and then, otherwise your filter will break, it will clog up and it won't work and you've wasted money on a filter. All right guys, so I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to keep up to date with our content. But most of all, guys, make sure you're staying safe in this time of coronavirus. And like I said, if you want to get a pond, um, garden centres are open in the UK. So if that's something you want to do, chat to your parents about it. Don't just go with a shovel into your garden and dig a hole like I did when I was a youngster. It's not a great idea. Um, but yeah, go on, enjoy your garden, stay safe and take care.